My name is Dr. David Little, and today we're going to be demonstrating a procedure. We're going to be extracting a tooth that's a non-salvageable tooth, and we're going to be grafting the socket to maintain the alveolar bone. So we're going to go through and atraumatically extract the tooth, and then go through the steps and procedure to do proper socket grafting. Well, BioPlant is a alloplastic synthetic bone graft material. The most common uses are for socket grafting, for preserving ridges, um, and another great use is actually to be able to use it while you're placing an implant to fill in voids uh, around the implant area. Uh, that's one of the uses I use all the time and works very well for that. Why graft? Well, the, according to the ADA, 80,000 teeth are extracted in the United States every year. We also know that if a, if a socket is left ungrafted, that you'll get the most resorption in the first year. 25% of the of resorption takes place in the first year. In the next three years, it goes to about 8%, and then following that, it slows down considerably. But you can also lose about 40% of the height of the bone, which is critical in future restorations. It's also good for helping the, the health of the other teeth. And so my question always is, why not? And I think it's one of the biggest benefits and values we can give to our patients. Well, how do you fee for this? Because obviously patients, you know, it's going to be an additional fee. Um, what I have found is that as long as you explain to the patient the value of what you're doing, and that it is a simple procedure that can benefit them for a long time, uh, I haven't had patients, you know, have any, any problems with that. I can also tell you, though, that most insurance companies do pay for the procedure because they consider it a preventive type procedure. You know, you're practicing addition type dentistry. And uh, so I haven't seen that to be an issue. Uh, you know, you're going to get a fee for the extraction and then you have an additional fee for the grafting. And I have not had an issue with that from patients. And especially if you explain to them that if you don't do this procedure now and you do decide you want to have an implant done later, then you have to go through a lot more costly uh, expense and uh, to be able to do it, the implant then. Again, when you're talking about the cost of the graft material, one good thing is that BioPlan is available in many different sizes. So you can order just a 0.25 cc if you're going to do just a single socket, and that makes it very cost effective. And if you're going to take out multiple teeth, you can bulk order a bigger size and that allows you to be more cost effective um, with the material. So it gives you a lot of different ways to use it, you know, to, which is a good thing. I've already anesthetized the patient. Let me have an elevator, periodic elevator. And obviously one of the first things we want to do is to do a, an atraumatic extraction as we can. So I'm going to use a periosteal elevator to release the tissue. We really like to maintain as much bone as we can so that we can have a future plan for this tooth. By grafting the socket, it's going to allow us to um, be able to either come back and place an implant or a fixed partial denture or even a, a removable partial and by maintaining the alveolar ridge and the integrity of the bone. That also will benefit the surrounding teeth. We like to take it out atraumatically to maintain that buccal and lingual plate, which will allow us to do a grafting procedure with no membrane. Okay. Another useful instrument in atraumatic extraction is using a periotome. And like a small elevator, allows us to get in between the bone and the tooth and very atraumatically remove the tooth. And this is an atraumatic forcep, which is going to allow me to luxate the tooth. Okay, section that really well. So as you can and I'm going to clean out any infection that's in the tooth, any granulation tissue. And I'm just going to use a little sterile saline and irrigate that. Okay, and also, um, I'm going to use a CO2 laser uh, to just to decontaminate the extraction site. All right, and now we're ready to begin our graft procedure. 
And because we have the buckland lingual plate, we can do a straightforward uh, socket graft. And so what I'm going to do is one of the most important things in a graft procedure is to make sure you have bleeding in the socket. So if I did not have any bleeding in this area, I would want to make it bleed. And a couple of tips to do that, I could use the curette again. Go ahead and hand me that curette. And I could try to stimulate bleeding by just using a curette. If I still didn't have the bleeding that I wanted, then I could go and use a round burr, and I'm going to go into the socket area and just decorticate to stimulate some bleeding. Okay. As you can see, now I've got the socket bleeding, which is exactly what we want. So now I'm going to take and start my grafting procedure. So we're going to use a, an alloplast. If you'll open that up for me. We're going to use an alloplast graft material, um, bio plant. And it's a synthetic. And so we're going to um, use that as our graft material. If you'll notice, if the bio plant um, comes in a syringe and it has a tip on the end, which is called a bio tip, and then the graft material is inside. And the way to do this with this technique is I'm going to take this tip and I'm going to draw up some blood. And what I'm doing with that is, is I'm using the blood to hydrate the graft material. Okay. And I'd really like to hydrate it a little bit more. So I'm actually going to decorticate a little bit more to stimulate a little bit more hemorrhage. Okay, so as you can see now, we've um, drew up some blood. We're going to wipe off the excess of the tip, and you can see we've hydrated the graft material. Now, the next thing to do to make this work the best is to let this sit for about three or four minutes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that bio tip. So I'm just going to pull the whole assembly off. And now if you look, you're going to see our graft material is in the syringe and it's been hydrated by the patient's own blood. So now I'm going to take this and use this as a device to deliver the graft material. And you can see it's very easily done by the design. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to go in and I'm going to deliver the graft material to the socket. To about two-thirds or at least all the way up to the ridge. So I'm going to place a little bit and now I'm going to take just a, this is a standard uh, grafting instrument. It's got a plugger on one side and a curved instrument on the other. And what I'm going to do is just place this. Now, the great thing about the bio plant material is that it's negatively charged. So it actually is attracted by the bone. And so you can see you don't have to uh, worry about it displacing and going everywhere. It, goes real, really easily into the socket. It's one of the easiest graft materials to place. Okay, let me just have a little bit more. Fill that lingual just a little. And let me have a uh, wet cotton roll. And one thing I like to do too is I'll take a cotton roll with some sterile water on it and just use that to kind of make sure I've got the graft in the position I want it in. And you can see that the particles come together really easily with this material. And this is a two-rooted bicuspid, so I'm going to make sure I get the graft material down in both roots. The bio plant actually stays in place so well that actually a membrane is not absolutely needed, which again makes it a very simple procedure for a socket graft. In this case, though, I am going to go ahead and place a little bit of a collagen uh, membrane which is again very easy to place. And then I'm going to suture, but I'm not looking for primary closure here because we're trying to maintain interproximal bone. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a collagen membrane right over the top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to suture again over that just to hold the material in place. I'm going to do just an internal mattress type suture here. So I'm going to Bring it from the lingual. And again, like I was saying, I'm not really looking for primary closure. All I want to do is close the ends together and so that I keep my graft material in place. And I'm going to put one more. Okay. 
All right, if you'll cut that. All right, so as you can see now, we have um, cleaned the socket out really well. We've placed the graph material in place, and then we've put a collagen dressing over the top. The last thing I like to do is to take the CO2 laser and just do a little sterilization around the extraction area. This kind of acts as just a, a kind of a Band-Aid. And now we'll have the patient bite down on some wet gauze. And close for me. Okay. And the big advantage of, of doing a grafting procedure is, even though if the patient doesn't know what he's going to do um, for a future restoration, whether it be an implant or a fixed parcel denture, uh, at least we're maintaining the integrity of that bone. Because in the first year, 25% of that bone will resorb with nothing in it. This gives us that opportunity to have options uh, for future treatment. I'm Kathy. I'm Dr. David Little's dental assistant. I assisted during the procedure with Reuben. Uh, we extracted tooth number five and placed by a plant uh, bone graft material. Uh, these are the post-op instructions I go over uh, with the patient after this type of procedure. Um, for the first 24 hours, the patient uh, will have some bleeding. Uh, we ask the patient about every 30 to 40 minutes, uh, replace the gauze. The gauze needs to be wet um, before placed so it doesn't pull the Im implant material out. Um, it'll bleed for two to three hours, so he will place the gauze um, three or four different times. Um, there may, may be some swelling that occurs, so we ask that the patient use ice for the first 24 hours. If uh, there's swelling the next day, then he can switch to heat, soft foods for several days, uh, no brushing in that area. Uh, in that site, there is bone graft material, a piece of collagen, and sutures, so he just needs to be careful with um, getting anything in that area. Uh, little particles of the bone graft material he may find in his mouth, um, that's perfectly fine, that's perfectly normal. Uh, we just assure the patient that there's enough bone graft material in that site um, that those little pieces are not going to be a problem. Um, Diet, soft diet, uh, oral hygiene is also um, very important. Um, uh, rinsing with warm salt water um, the day after the surgery is important, but the day of the surgery we ask that he not, not do any vigorous rinsing at all. We want the bone graft material to stay in place. We see the patient back in, in uh, one week for a post-op visit. If the sutures have not resorbed by then, we do take the sutures out, um, and then we see them again in a month for a second post-op visit. Well, bone grafting, for one thing, is not a difficult procedure to do, especially the procedure we did today, socket grafting. Uh, there is a learning curve with anything we do, but the material is designed so it's easy to place. Uh, the particles have a negative charge, so it's very doesn't run all over the place. It stays. It's attracted to the bone. Uh, so it's very easy to work with. And so there's really not a big learning curve with this material. So the technique for doing a socket graft with bioplant material, um, you atraumatically remove the tooth because we want to maintain as much bone as we can, especially the buccal and lingual plate. Um, next, you would curette the area out to remove any granulation tissue, any infection that's in there. Um, then it's very important before you graft that you have bleeding in the socket because that's the only way you're going to get that graft to take and, and work well. So sometimes after you take the tooth out, there's not any bleeding in the socket. So one tip is if you don't go back and curette the area and stimulate the bleeding that way, if you still don't get it, you can decorticate by using a small round burr and go into the bone until you get hemorrhage. And then that will promote you know, the cells to start healing and to promote a, a good graft. Once you've done that, now you're going to take the bio plant bio tip and draw up some of the blood so that it hydrates the bone graft material. So you'll draw the blood up and then you're going to leave that set for about three to four minutes. Let that material hydrate very well. Once you've done that, you'll remove the, the entire assembly, the bio tip, and you'll be able to syringe directly into the socket and you'll use that to fill the socket um, approximately to the height of the crest about two-thirds of the way full, and so it's a very simple procedure to, to accomplish. So when we talk about grafting, um, the question is, you know, which material do I use when? And I, I, I think that you have several options with bone grafting materials. The gold standard is still autogenous bone, our, our own bone. 
the next category would be um, alloplasts, which would be the same species, which would be like cadaver bone. The next category would be xenografts, which is uh, different species. And then alloplasts, and, and alloplasts is what bioplant is. Now, the advantages of, of the uh, bioplant material is that one, cost-wise, it's, it's, it's a nice feature to be able to do a great service for your patient. Um, it also, there is no chance of any type of uh, disease transmission because it's a synthetic material. Uh, some patients have religious beliefs where they don't like to use bone products, so this is a great material to use in that situation. Uh, it also, because of the particles and the negative charge, it, it allows us to be able to place it in and it tracks to the bone very well. And so most times you don't have to use a membrane, which is another cost saving to, to consider. And I think using this in a situation where you're not sure what the patient's going to do long term. And like we discussed earlier, if you do nothing, you're going to lose 25% of that bone in the first year. And what happens too many times is those patients, they come back in a year and now they're ready to do an implant and you don't have enough bone. So now you have to go back and do uh, an extensive procedure or a more costly procedure to be able to graft that bone. Whereas if you'd have just taken and done a socket graft right then, then that maintains the integrity of that bone. And with all alloplasts, you have to wait a little bit longer before you can place the implant. In this case, BioPlant recommends 12 months, but that maintains that integrity of the bone and allows you that option in the future. And that's a huge benefit. And again, it's just a great service to our patients to be able to do that. There are some patients that have religious beliefs that do not like to use allografts. So BioPlant is a great um, alloplastic material since it is synthetic and that would be a good material to use in those cases. You know, as far as bone grafting materials go, you really, the only contraindication would be that if they had an alert, allergic uh, reaction to any kind of plastics, because it is synthetic, and so any, any type of allergies to that material would be one issue, which is very, very rare. Um, the only other time that, that I recommend you don't even use a graft is if you have a real serious infection, a lot of um, pus and, I would rather um, let that patient get on antibiotics, bring them back in a couple of weeks, and then perform the grafting procedure. So as you can see on the left side of the screen here, we have the pre-op photo, which shows the, the tooth pre-extraction. And then on the right side, you can see uh, where we have extracted the tooth, and you can see the bile plant particles that uh, we use for the bone graft material. And what that, those spherical shape is gonna do for us is to allow, promote bone growth. And so what it's gonna do is hold a scaffolding for that, and so the patient's own body will fill their bone back in. What that does is, if you don't put a graft in there, then you're gonna get 25% resorption in the first year. By doing this, you're maintaining the integrity of that socket and maintaining bone, which would be important in the fact that it gives you options later. You can go with an implant, you can do a fixed partial denture and maintain that ridge. Even if you went with a partial, it would maintain that bone and make the partial fit better. So this is a great service to patients and really make sure we preserve bone. And, and that's what we're trying to do with, with socket grafting.